My name is Kiran Patel. I'm father to Karan Patel. Well, before automobile, Karan has a young boy. He was always interested in speed. My name is Kush Patel. I'm Karan's younger brother. So there's just two of us brothers, so I'm the youngest of the two. Uh, I'm actually a lawyer by profession, but uh, we run a garage. That's just out of my love for cars. I always wanted to uh, drive the car you know my driver I used to have a driver obviously um, I was underage I was riding bike so um, I used to actually he used my driver used to let me drive the car at the motocross track my first memories of of a car uh, off-road would be when I was allowed to to you know like uh, Chini Amaji mess around with the with the car that was towing the trailer um, at the motocross track sometimes when they are left at home with the driver, without my knowledge, he used, and he was underage, he used to take the car and of course the driver <laughs> used to let him drive, which was not the right thing to do. And once uh, I actually caught him and actually took him to the police station to scare him. <laughs> I'm Karan's mom, Tina. When I came back home, I'm wondering, where's the car? And Karan had taken it for a spin, right? I called my husband, he's like, yeah, yeah. And then he just called the cop and said, just go and take this guy. Yeah, so at least he learns his lesson, basically. No, he loved motorbikes. I gave him that opportunity at that time. He was good at motorbikes, but he wanted to go into cars. And I didn't know at that time whether how far he would go into uh, rallying. But he really, really wanted to give it a try with uh, rallying. But of course, his mother <laughs> wanted him to complete his studies first. My dad's always been focused on us having an education, securing a career, and then we can do, in essence, what we want again, as long as it's within reason. Yeah, so that was his marker point that we need to get a job, have a degree of some sort, and then you can have what he says, your fun. So our fun was rallying. And once we achieved that, he was happy to let us go rallying. You know, for us, money doesn't grow on trees. It, it came with his hard work and his dedication. And he's taught me a lot uh, to do the same today. Um, so nothing is taken for granted. But yes, he's very calculated. So when it came to motocross, we, he didn't just buy me the best bike. He bought me something that wasn't even made for racing on a track. It had no power, no acceleration. But he just got me something. And he said, here, start with this. He was always fascinated about cars from a very young age. But when he started rallying in 2014, I don't think at that point even he knew where his journey is going to take him. But I think the eye-opener, again I go back to 2016. It might have been a bit too early to take him abroad, a bit too late to take him abroad, but I think it was the right time because when I took him abroad, he met all the top world rally drivers there. And of course, I think at that time he decided himself that he wants to be in that position one day, to be a professional rally driver. I think that journey of 2016, the trip abroad, was a big eye opener for him. Uh, I think uh, when current went there, he thought he was going to be the best which was not the case, he was truly, truly shocked, as were we, yeah. But I guess it taught him a lot to bring him to the level now. Yeah, I think if we didn't go there, he wouldn't be at this level now. Um, I was actually the first Kenyan to take part in a WRC event for a very long time when I participated in the Drive DMAC Fiesta Trophy, um, which was in 2016. So in 2016, uh, we did five events um, in, a, in a Ford Fiesta R2T car, which is a two-wheel drive turbocharged front-wheel drive car. And um, we did Finland, we started with Portugal, I don't know the sequence, it was Portugal, Poland, Finland, uh, Germany and Spain. So a mix of tarmac, a mix of uh, tarmac and gravel. Um, going into the events, definitely a lot of nervousness. Um, being a Kenyan, people didn't know what to expect, um, but the car was fully branded in Kenyan colors, and uh, I was quite promising in the way I was racing. But I would get tired, so I'd lead, I'd lead the race for two, three laps, and then 
uh, fatty good ketchup. And then the, the next fittest guy is ahead. We saw a lot of evidence that there's fatigue, a lot of poor fitness in me. Uh, so that was the first thing I started working on as soon as we got back to Kenya from following all those events, is fitness. Every moment of a rally for me is a bonding moment. Eh? And um, that bonding, it's, I cannot put a value to it. Yeah? it is. It is the best way to bond, I think. You can give a child a present and his birthday. Fair enough, it is appreciated, but a few days it's forgotten. And he's on his way, and he's on. But here, when rally comes, you're always back together. Then you come, you work. Then when rally comes, you're always back together. So that bonding, it's, it's different from when you're bonding uh, by giving uh, maybe gifts. I think most drivers in Kenya, and uh, I don't say all, but most, uh, rallying is a hobby of some sort. It's not a day in, day out thing for them. It's like, you know, we can go out to drive current, it's fully focused. Monday to Sunday, he's thinking about rally, what he can do to make his body better, the car, speaking to Rob, the engineer, he is fully, fully committed. I think that's what makes a huge, huge difference is the commitment now, it's 150% from him. You know, back in those days, if you compare the rally entries today and the rally entries in, in, in 2014, 2015, today you might have 10. Back then you had 40 or 30, 40, maybe 50. So finishing top five was a huge thing for us, you know. It's like, we're just amateurs. We're driving a 1998 Subaru Impreza. Most of the other guys are driving N10s, those, the latest cars of those days and we were able to be there up there. So to get to where we are today, we, you know, we were not going to rally actually this season, um, just because the, fi the finances had come to a position where we have to prioritize. So this, this season was not going to be a season where we'd be racing, but then towards the end of uh, 2022 is when I was announced uh, as a Red Bull athlete. And that was a game changer for all of us, you know, because it's a, it's a huge thing. You can't have a pure career in motorsports. Yeah, the financials don't allow that. I think a major constraint for going global or something is finances. It costs a lot to run. I think any global sport team costs millions and millions per event. So I think financial constraints is one of the big things. And Red Bull coming into Kenya and providing to people the opportunity to be the face of Red Bull and the, the sports. I think it's giving people that notion that, yeah, you can make a profession out of this. When you have a sponsor on board, uh, personally, I can push a little harder knowing that there's some finance to put towards fixing the car should anything wear out or break earlier than expected. Unless there's a sponsor on board, it allows me to give, me, give that 10% extra, take those risks, knowing that at least, uh, yeah, yeah, someone behind, some money behind it, because maintaining uh, you know, cars like the R5 is not cheap, it takes its toll, so being me, I know how to take care of the car, I know I've learned how to preserve the car.